Hey, what is up guys? It is Card Shuffler 99 here and today I'm going to be revealing for you guys Shinlim's performance on America's Got Talent semi-final stage. He performed a close-up card magic trick as he does in most of his routines and today we're going to try to break this down for you guys today. The goal by the end of this video is for you guys to leave with knowledge of how he performed this effect. Now, if you haven't seen the trick, be sure to go check it out on America's Got Talent's channel. Then you guys can come back here, watch the reveal, and have an understanding of how he's going to go about doing this trick. Now, we do have a giveaway on the channel. If you guys want to enter, all you have to do is like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment anything you want down in the comment section, what you like about the video, what you like about our channel, and make sure you have those post notifications turned on. We are giving away 10 decks of cards. We'll have 10 winners for that. You get to pick what deck of cards you want. In fact, Shin Lim actually has his own deck of cards, the Regalia deck. Um, if you guys want to get that, you can get that deck as well. And then we're also giving away $50 gift card on Amazon. Now, we're giving away five $10 gift cards, so we're going to have 15 winners of this giveaway. So if you guys want to enter, once again, like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment what you guys like about the video in the comment section below, and make sure you guys have those post notifications turned on. Now, thanks to Amazon, we do have our very own link, amazon.com slash shop slash cardshuffler99. Basically, it's our own page on Amazon where we have a bunch of product recommendations. You guys can go onto that site see our recommendations, purchase whatever you want. You guys can buy any of our recommendations. At the end of the day, it is just Amazon. So you guys can just buy whatever you want. But anyway, let's get straight into the reveal. So I'm going to do my best. I know it's going to be difficult for you guys to understand what I'm talking about here. And then obviously you're going to have to go back and watch the trick. Now, so much happens in his routine that's very difficult to keep up with. So hopefully you guys watch the performance, have a general understanding of what he does. But I'm going to walk you guys through it. So He's going to start at the trick with a deck box. Now, what he's going to do is he's going to take out half the cards from the box. Now, you'll notice about halfway, three quarters of the way through his trick, what he does is he makes half the deck disappear. So the, the part of the deck that he's dealing with in the beginning of the trick, he's going to make that disappear. And then he supposedly makes it reappear inside the deck box. What's actually happening is he's using half the deck in the beginning of the trick. He's going to make that deck disappear and the other half of the deck is just sitting inside the box the whole time. That's how he's going to make it reappear. So that's just something you're going to have to keep in mind. Now, what he's going to do from there is he's going to have Heidi select a card. So Heidi's going to select a card, sign the card. Now, what he's going to do here is he's actually going to do a move with a magnet. Now, if you don't know, Shinlim actually does sell magnetic cards on his website. Now, what he's going to do here is he's going to place this card onto the deck. Now, you have to understand everything in magic happens for a reason. That's something I say all the time. Now, why, why realistically would he take this card, put it onto the deck face up if he's just going to have her sign the card anyway? Why wouldn't he just give her the card, say sign the card, and be done with it, right? Instead, he she selects the card, he puts it on top, he spreads the deck out, and then he tells her to sign it. What he's doing here, now the reason he puts it face up is because he's trying to make a double face card. Meaning this card here, the selection, is going to stick to the back of this card. Now, what is this card you might be thinking to yourself? Once again, these would be magnets, so they would stick to each other and create one card. This is actually going to be a duplicate signed Tyra card. Now, I'm going to show you guys a couple pictures. Now, these are a little difficult to make out, but I'm going to show it to you guys right here. Now, these are actually two screenshots, okay? Now, one of the screenshots right here this is actually when they zoomed in onto the picture of Tyra signing the card. Now, what you have to notice here is a couple things, and I'm going to explain that right now. The first thing you're going to want to keep uh, an eye on, I guess you could say, is that on the end of her signature, you could see here that it's curved, right? You could see at the top here, it's curved right there, right? So you can see that's a curve. And the also, one other thing you have to see is that the R and the A are not lined up. So here's the A right here. You got the R right there. They're not lined up at the bottom. You can see the A is elevated. It's lifted up a little bit. It's sort of slanted and goes up. Compare that to the signature that you can see later on in the performance. You'll notice here that there is no curvature up here. You can see that's actually relatively flat. It just goes straight across. You can see that's flat right there. And the other thing that you're going to want to notice is that right here, the R and the A are actually completely lined up. You can see here, this is the A, there's the R. If you look really closely, the R and the A are actually lined up when you look at the bottom. It's not slanted. So when you look at both these signatures, they're actually not the same signature. These are actually duplicates. 
that he's going to use throughout the trick to make this trick work out. Now, once again, I'll, I'll get into that a little more in depth later, but as you can see there, proof, he is going to be using duplicate cards. So, at this point, what he's going to do is he's going to do a card switch. So once again, once he has his duplicate or his double facer set up on the table, what he does is he's going to do a really slick switch. Once it's elevated, it's going to be resting just like so onto the table. What he's doing is he's using his fingers to actually bring the card onto the bottom of the deck, okay? And what that does is it actually flips the card over. Once he does that, he's dropping off the top card. So you're gonna have to watch that very closely. But what he does is he's actually just taking the original selection, putting it onto the bottom of the deck, and he's actually just tossing off with his index finger, for example, he would toss off the top card. And that's going to be the switch. Now this top card's a blank card, that's how he's going to make the card supposedly disappear. Now right after he does this move, you'll notice he's going to do a little flip. You'll notice he's playing around with the deck. What he's doing here is he's taking this card and he's actually just flipping it back over. Why is he doing that? It's just to reset it because originally when he took the card off the table and he basically flipped it over, he's gonna flip it over so it goes onto the bottom of the deck. So once it flips over, he's gonna have to reset it, put it back that way it's the original selection, right? Now at this point, he's going to do a Mercury fold, okay? Now Robert's gonna come in and he's gonna show you what this is. Now this is the point in the trick where he's going to take the deck, put it in his mouth, okay? Once it's in his mouth, he's going to be doing a Mercury fold and Robert's gonna show you what that is. So basically that's how he's gonna get the card to appear folded up in his mouth. So what you'll see is a Mercury fold is almost invisible to the eye and it happens to the bottom card on the deck. So what it is, is you take your index finger and you put pressure on the bottom card and what this will do is it will fold or it will bring the top of this card down to the bottom. From here, what you can do is you can almost make a little crease. And now this is all under the deck. So it just looks like you're almost squaring up the deck. And all that's doing is that's bringing the two edges of the cards together at the bottom of the deck. And from there, you if you adjust your grip, this is what's happening without the deck, you just push with your thumb and your um, middle finger. So this is folded up, right, under the deck. And then you push these two together, which will fold the card into fourths. So the card is now folded into fourths, and he will take this card, and you'll notice he'll bring the deck up to his mouth. The card will be right here, and when he puts the deck into his mouth, he actually sneaks this card into his mouth. So once again, this card is on the bottom of the deck, right? He's going to do the Mercury Fold, so the deck stays like this. He pushes with his index finger, that folds the card this way. With his middle finger and thumb, he brings them together, and that will fold up the card on the middle of the, or on the bottom of the deck. From here, he just puts the deck into his mouth and just puts this card in his mouth with it. That is the Mercury Fold. Okay, anyway. Now, once he does that, now keep in mind, once he has that card on the bottom of the deck, so once again, as I said before, he has that double face card stuck by magnets on the bottom of the deck. This is the card that he's Mercury folding. This is the card that's on the bottom of the deck, and that sets it up perfectly for his Mercury fold, okay? At this point, he puts this into his mouth. He's going to put the actual Mercury folded double backed card into his mouth, and then he's going to go from there. Now, what he does at this point He's going to put this in his mouth, okay, so it's going to be folded up, and then he's basically going to show, okay, now this is blank, I got the card in my mouth. At this point, he's going to take that card, he's going to put it into the bag, okay? Now, if you haven't seen, he actually performed this trick on Penn & Teller Fool Us, and essentially, once this card's in the, in the bag, the way he changes it is he literally just flips the bag over. So once he flips the bag over, it reveals the other side, and once again, like I said, the other side that the original Heidi selection, the back of Heidi selection, is Tyra's duplicate. Now he's gonna have several duplicates. Once again, you can look at the, the signatures yourself. They're not the same, okay? One's literally from when they showed Tyra signing it. The other one was near the end of the trick where you can tell he's doing some switches. So at this point, he's gonna have Tyra select a card, okay? Once Tyra selects the card, this is the same half of the deck. What he does from here is you'll notice he reaches onto his shirt. Now, earlier in the trick, or at some point in the trick, you, he literally visibly shows himself putting something into his left side of his vest, right, his, re his red vest. This red vest is flooded with hidden pockets. You'll notice once he puts something into his pocket, he even shows everybody. I don't know exactly what point in the trick this was, 
but on his left side of his vest, his left side, and, you know, so in that case it would be our right, he, you can tell he puts something into his shirt and you can't even see a pocket there. So what he does is he's going to take this deck, he ditches it into the right side pocket on his red vest, so that would be our left from you know our perspective, I guess you could say. He ditches the deck and that's how he's going to make it appear as if the deck reappeared in the box, right? Because from the beginning of the trick, like I said, he's still gonna have half the deck in the box. Now at this point, you might be wondering, well, how does he sell the illusion that there's a deck when there's really only one card left? Well, the way he does it is he's going to have something very similar to this. It's just one card with flaps on the side. So it's sort of like a box, except for example, let's say I was looking at this box right here. Imagine this box without this side right here, okay? So this face of the box right here wouldn't be existent. That way, these sides are here and the front is here. That way, it looks as if it's just a whole deck, right? Because you can see the sides, you can see the top, it looks like a deck. But eventually, the flaps, because this bottom part's not here, the flaps would fold over, and that's how he makes it seem like one card. But anyway, guys, that is essentially the entire trick. The rest of it mostly revolves around him basically using the duplicates and making them reappear in different places. But the general idea is that he is using a duplicated tire signature. That is really it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And anyway, this is Card Shuffler 99. Peace out.